Hey guys, welcome to Info Abroad. And today we're gonna to be talking about websites. Um, in particular, this one today, actually we're only gonna be talking about this website and it's called Trustpilot. Trustpilot is one of the, I just think everyone should know it by now, but I don't think it's a website that you should use as a main source of information because of the following reasons. And I have a few examples to talk about and it, it, it basically, pisses me off that people still use it as a platform, especially now to, to steam off on it, to really just get completely mad to people, uh, to companies, even though they're doing their best to sort out a certain situation. And I really just don't like the way Trustpilot works. And just think about this one. Each review has a personal story. Sorry, let me get to a bigger screen. But each review has a personal story. That's a true point. But is it a story about the business or your own intellectual behavior? Because sometimes I'm really questioning what people are posting there uh, because it just makes no sense to the entire experience of where they ordered things. And the reason why I actually found Trustpilot quite interesting to talk about today, uh, actually on my first podcast type video, we're looking at, I was looking at AliExpress on Google and I got the Trustpilot page coming up and it only showed me a review of uh, 1.3 stars. You can see it there. And I was just thinking, wait a second. I ordered a lot of times from AliExpress and I never had an issue. And I was just reading through the comments and I'm really questioning, yo, yo, guys, do you even know what AliExpress is? Do you actually know? AliExpress does not even own any of the products. They do not own any of the products on the websites, these are all just sellers. And all that AliExpress is, is a platform. Let's say it's a massive field owned by a farmer where he gives space to different sellers to sell the products. Super nice. I think it's a great concept. And what they do is you have to pay uh, AliExpress a monthly fee and they will help you with promotion. And depending on the season or the month, you know, let's say they have a phone sale, they'll ask different uh, re retailers, hey, would you like to be part of the sale or not? You know, and I think this is a really cool community. It's exactly the same as Amazon, but the products are all from mainland China, which is a very important point because I think most of the people who comment on here are not from China, meaning they're gonna wait a little longer for the package, generally for your package to arrive. I mean. It takes a long time just to travel to China, give, let alone get a package out of China. There's a lot of processes that people are not aware of, but I'll get to that point a little later. Nonetheless, I was just looking through a, just the comments. I mean, there is just so many things where I'm like, hmm, hmm, guys, what? Just like here, horrible experience, big scam. I ordered quality headphones for 25 or oh, sorry, $24 quality for $24. Let's think about it. I mean, these headphones back then cost me 300 Euro. That's around $350. And these are quality. I have no idea what you expect for $24, but I don't think it's quality depending. It depends on if your expectations are super low. My point is that a lot of people think that they're going to get an Apple service when they order over AliExpress. This is where you're wrong. You need to think about the entire process of ordering a product from AliExpress or generally from China. So the first issue with most of these comments is that people are having missed. Oh, wait, what are they? They're basically missing tracking numbers. They are the products are not arriving. The products come open. The products come uh, undelivered a lot of bunch of things that can happen. But guys, this also happens with Amazon Prime. I had packages go missing as well and no one could tell me where they were, not even DHL, while they're the ones, the ones that actually delivered my product. At the end of the day, I don't know what happened to it, but mistakes happen. And let me just explain to you how the system works. If you order something from China, and I'm just gonna make an example quick. Mm. Let's think about it. Little Johnny on the street just started his first factory. He sells his I don't know, he sells, he sells a billion products. I mean, let's even go down a bit. Let's go to a million products a year, okay? He sells something to cool down laptops a little bit better. Fantastic product, I could actually use that. I know some other people who could also use that on their laptop. But where the problem comes from is that 
if he uses China Post because it's 50 cents cheaper than DHL, which is a global postage uh, company, he's going to save 500,000 a year just on postage. That's a lot of money. But you have to think about it. The post goes from China Post to the airport, to the shipping company. Once it arrives in the country of origin, there is no China Post anymore. And this is where the tracking stops because we do not know, or not even they know, who actually delivers your product. Most likely someone is gonna get paid for it, but there might just not be any tracking number for it. It's that simple. Most of the time, and I'm currently in Germany, it's actually just the, the, the postman who delivers it. It's not DHL, it's not the post, it, sorry, it's not the UPS, it's just the postman who comes by no one else and i'm just a bit shocked because to me it's more like hmm are the people who buy on these websites actually aware of it and let me go a little bit more into detail we have aliexpress okay and this this is where my issue comes with trustpilot if you just look at the reviews here it just looks like hey do not order on this website it is terrible red 91 of the people no sorry 91 percent of the people say don't buy here you really not want to buy here warning warning you know even look at it you go over the 88 percent it turns red red is for danger orange kind of danger orange orange oh we're getting green so even all of these are considered as dangerous think about it this is not something that portrays the truth especially about aliexpress now why am i saying that because i'm actually or I did the the math behind it, 2,000 reviews, and I just did some research. So, AliExpress has approximately 20 million people who visit their website. Out of those 20 million people, uh, I read that approximately 5 million people take, make an order, which is a lot of people, and this is on a global scale. Fantastic, 5 million. But do you know how much 2,000 reviews equals to 5 million sales per day and sorry these 2000 reviews come from year 2018 so you have to think of this is over two years you know time frame but let's just take it for consideration that these 2000 reviews came from yesterday from the 5 million sales yesterday that's a 0.04 percent chance of something going bad let's say all of these 2000 reviews are bad that's 0.04% of the people that had a negative experience. Put it in perspective. That's a very small chance. And that is giving everyone every day running with the same cycles, the same chain, and everything goes as planned. No. Every time it will be a different seller doing a different route. Meaning every day there might be a different fluctuation on people actually getting the products and who don't. But my point is, this sells a really fake review, in my opinion. It's not legit. And I think that Trustpilot should actually uh, go back into it and review this. At least mention it to people to say, hey, this are, or these are the 2,000 reviews from the 5 million sales uh, today. I mean, if you think about it, 5 million sales every day is fantastic. But do that on a yearly basis. This number decreases much lower you know, do 5 million times 365 and then divide it with this number. I don't want to calculate it right now, but you get my point. It just shows real negative information. And these are the comments that will scare people away from buying it, even though it's a very small percentage, a very small percentage. If I had 10 customers and eight of them were complaining about my stuff or my, my product every day, then I have a legit reason to, you know, not purchase something over there. But if I have it as a mini school percentage of people going to this website and actually thinking, oh, oh, this looks terrible. I will not buy anything from AliExpress. I could save 20 euro, but I decide to not because I see that a lot of people aren't happy, but they do not see that it's only 0.04% the higher number uh, chance of you getting a negative experience. It, it, it's just mind boggling. Then I also had my second experience. Um, experience. This is another store which I actually purchased from. Store in Aidland. Good store, by the way, in case you're in Europe. Uh, to me, they helped me a few times. I ordered products. Sometimes I even just write them to say, hey, like, do you order something based on these specifications? It was not on the website, but they found a retailer and uh, they say yeah we can 
sell it to you no problem super cool service if i may say so but 280 sorry 280 000, 280 reviews all from 2017 so let's say 100 reviews a, a, a year that's nothing but what is the warning again that i see by trustpilot you know red red massive red don't go there hands away boom 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 very artificial experience and i did the math here as well i talked to them as well they have around 50k sales uh, a year a year so it's not even per day per year and 280 given if all these reviews came from this year would be 0.4 percent but i divided by by three and you get like 0.13 um uh percent think about it 0.13 percent chance of your order going bad that's just the chances are small but these things even happen with amazon over these days on amazon i've uh let's say and it's not even let's say i remember once i did a, a calculation i ordered 10 packages uh on different time frames but it was just very interesting because it was a certain uh time frame for me but i ordered 10 packages out of all the packages i had no issue um but one product was broken okay and this is amazon remember and one product didn't even arrive on time that is really frustrating because amazon promises that it will be delivered within a certain time frame and when it doesn't that is mind-boggling but you can always get in contact with amazon and they will help you out to a certain point and which is fantastic but my problem is that these people do not review on trustpilot they just review on amazon and on amazon people are much more lenient but on trustpilot people go harsh this guy for example ordered masks fantastic it was opened well guess what sherlock they open up packages at customs why because they want to make sure that what is ordered also follows the regulations within certain countries i had the same issue once i once ordered um uh, a product it didn't even arrive at my door but i got a letter to say hey this does not really follow regulations what do i do well you cannot do anything about it you are stuck with it and then you have to say okay it has been opened i received the package from japan has been opened fully because they wanted to know what was inside of it fair enough guys stop posting things and giving people one stars knowing that these things are just normal these are normal things that can happen but these are also the comments that can destroy a business if people use this as a main source of info. And yeah, sorry, Trustpilot, but you're one of those companies that enforces it. You don't give any type of information. Of course, you give people a chance to write something here. Fine. But really, this doesn't help as much because this information should be brought out a little bit more. I'm not really going to read this most likely. I'm just going to skip through it. What is red? What is green? What is, you know, dangerous to me? That is how people work, but this is just somehow hiding it. it. It doesn't really help. Be like Amazon. Amazon has a system that states you can make a review on a product on their platform given you purchased the product. And then it would say Ver verified purchase by Amazon, meaning the person who reviewed it actually purchased it from Amazon and he does have it. You also have a chance to review a product uh, without buying it on Amazon but then it would also say uh, that you did not buy it by amazon so people have have a better scope and i think this this should be the system on how it works and i've been just talking to a company uh, who is also on trustpilot there we had a funny conversation so basically there was a guy who commented something and it was completely incorrect because the guy had the proof i show he showed me the emails super funny actually but he contacted Trustpilot and what did Trustpilot do? They say, sorry, but everyone has a freedom of speech. What? Freedom of speech? That's lying. That's called defamation. That is not the way you should do it. You know, this is not a non-biased system. You're allowed, you're allowing biased people to review other companies on your platform. And you don't even know if the person has purchased the product, if you even ate at the restaurant or anything. Think about it. It could just be an entire family just posting one review after the other. Poof. That's crazy that you allow these things. And that's my uh, my issue uh, with Trustpilot to why I don't trust it. And there was one more detail that I think is important. Uh, the same guy told me, so Trustpilot also makes money and they make around 60 million a year. And you wonder where it comes from because they don't really 
have any ads on the website, which is kind of cool. I like that. At least it's ad free. But where does the money come from? So what they do is they offer people packages uh, for 140 euro a month. And what it allows is for you to post your uh, reviews from Trustpilot on your website. So it, it just gets uh, transferred, which is cool. But what I don't like is that people are asked to review their customer experience within 24 hours after they made the purchase on a certain website. I'm sorry, but what's the chance of you having even your product in front of you within 24 hours? The chance is minimal. And how many people are just going to say, I had a great experience. It was very easy. I clicked on my product and I ordered it and it seems no issue so far. And I got a tracking number. Yes, that's great. And boom, five stars, five stars, boom, boom, boom. Fantastic, no? And this ranks you up much higher and it's also good for your website, but it's also much better for your Trustpilot score. But it's just so artificial because you're enforcing people to review you. You're gonna spam them with reviews. I remember that I ordered something and they I got three emails from Trustpilot to keep asking me about, can you leave a review? Man, no, I'm not gonna order, uh, sorry, leave a review for me ordering uh, batteries. It's just ridiculous, I only want batteries. It's not like they saved my life or anything. I just ordered batteries, nothing more. Think about it, nothing more. There is nothing to review there. But my thing is, let's say the rest of these people, the 99.5% .5 of this company, the 99.92, uh, if we do it on, uh, if we split this in two, percent, or 99.98%, percent, sorry, nearly 100%. Think about it, nearly 100% of the people, if they honestly would review AliExpress, I do not think it would be on 1.3. I think this is just a terrible way of confronting information. And I think Trustpilot is not the company where I would actually uh, invest my time in because I've ordered from both platforms. I had no bad experiences. And I think a lot of people do not know the scope of the difficulty from shipping one product from one end of the world to the other end of the world. There's a lot of regulations. There's a lot of transport that needs to happen and a lot can happen. If you want to make sure that your laptop arrives in one piece, go to Apple, go to the closest electronic store but don't order from the other end of the world because anything can happen to your product. And I'm sorry, going back to this post, each review has a personal story. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it also somehow shows each review has a IQ of zero. I'm sorry, but that's just my opinion. Uh, of course, I'm not saying this for everything. I'm not saying that all reviews are terrible. There are, of course, also people who will leave honest reviews, which I you can read, and they actually give a reason to why they're happy. But um, if you read through the crap, it just gives you a headache, and it just really shows that people are not educated on where they get the products from. So, yeah, this is my little rant on Trustpilot. Um, I just hope that you learned a little bit about Trustpilot. I just hope that it just opens up your mind that you should not use Trustpilot alone as a reference. Try to picture a better picture of multiple websites together to see if it's true or not. If the product is not cheap, maybe risk it. But if it's an expensive product, don't buy over these products, uh, websites. Just don't buy over these websites. Terrible decision terrible idea and you're not going to reach anything with it because you're going to have a heart attack when you notice that you bought a tv from china and poof it's completely broken well guess what a lot of things can happen with a 10,000 kilometer distance plane travel car travel boat travel a lot of things can happen just saying so take care and uh hope to see you next time see you then bye bye